So this is the final uh, part of this series you know, how to use a lot of free tools. And if you've been following us from the beginning, we've made, uh, we've made PC boards, we've uh, uh, talked about the ATtiny AVR processor. Uh, last time we went through uh, KiCad. And now, uh, assuming that people are, are going to use the laser cutter to uh, make some of their parts, uh, we're going to go through um, Inkscape, which is a free, totally free, doesn't care what operating system you got, they probably have a version for it, um, uh, program that's sort of like Illustrate, uh, Adobe Illustrator. Now, it's not, it is not as good as Adobe Illustrator, but then again, it's not zero, it's a really, really good program. And I, I have found it amazingly good, uh, free software. There, you know, every once in a while you run into something and you say, <clears throat> that's a little glitchy. But overall, it is really something you probably <coughs> want to put down. Now, the learning curve, the learning curve isn't too bad. All right? Now, I'm going to be, but if, imagine if somebody told you, okay, I'm going to teach you Photoshop. <laughs> I think you're all familiar with Photoshop. And I'm going to do it in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> well, that's kind of the, where we are, all right? So I'm going to be scoping this thing quite a, quite a bit. We're going to be looking <coughs> at it in trying to get you where you could cut parts on the laser cutter from parts that you've designed using Inkscape. All right? We're not doing art. All right? We're not using every feature that Inkscape has. Uh, Inkscape <coughs> is a deep program, and uh, we will not be touching everything. So here's here's what I'm going to be trying to do today. Okay, I'm going to going to provide you some insight into some of the features that are uh, most useful for designing parts for the laser cutter. Um, as we go through, I'm hopefully showing you some techniques that will speed up your design. One of the problems that a lot of people have, uh, especially if they're coming from a CAD program, uh, is they overcomplicate this. All right, they make it a lot harder. You know, they're 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 working with their grids and their guides and all of this, and they're trying to. And it turns out you you do need that stuff, but. It, it's, it's a lot simpler than most people use it. Uh, we're going to present some small projects, and that's what I really want to get to quickly through this, is to get to the project so we can kind of step through, because I think actually stepping through a project will help you learn what you need to know the fastest. Now, you say, oh my God, I, I'm not, how am I going to follow that? I mean, that, that project had like 50 steps. I ain't gonna follow it. The presentation has a guide or a script for every one of the projects that I get to. And hopefully we get through all four. Alright? Now so that means sit back, enjoy, don't worry about the details. You should be able to take this at home in your own room and recreate these these projects. Uh, you'll have all the information that you need. Now you say, well, where do I get this file? Well, hopefully it'll be up on the DPRG website. If it's not on the DPR website, it'll be placed on this computer that's in here with the laser printer, so you can download it from that. Okay? So it, it will be accessible. <coughs> all right? Uh, let's see. And like I said, leave you with some material. Okay. The first thing we need to do now... Most people are pretty familiar with computer programs, and so this interface is uh, going to be pretty quick for you to do. All right, you have the menu bar up on the top, okay, just like all Windows type programs. Uh, the next bar is uh, the command bar, uh, not not something we're going to worry too much about. The tool control bar that we're going to be using a lot. So when you pick a specific tool the tool control bar will change and the options, the most common options you're going to need will be on that toolbar. Now along that side is the toolbox. Okay, now 
You notice I've connected this, uh, highlighted the select. All right. You know, you'll be most often you'll be using the select tool, or you'll be using uh, for parts. You're usually going to be using three tools. You'll either be using the box, the box tool, or square tool, or rectangle tool, and the circle. You also occasionally use the one that's just below the um, the uh, select, which is show, which shows the path. And sometimes you'll be modifying the path. And we'll talk about what a path is. Uh, you have a page. Now this is really nice. This is like a desk. You have your desk, and you put your piece of paper on the desk, but you have your stuff around the desk, right? So you can have. You, you define your page size, and you put your objects inside the page, or if you want to, you can take them off the edge of the page. So like if you're creating a template that you're going to be using over and over again, you just pull it off to the side of the page, and you use it there. All right? Um, okay, down at the bottom, there is something called fill and stroke. Now, when you have an object, let's say a circle, okay, a circle is a closed object, the inside, if you want it colored, will be the fill. The outline of the circle will be the stroke. Okay, so you're constantly going to want to change the colors and the strokes usually. Now, in actuality, in, in making parts, you're going to set the stroke. You're going to have the stroke <coughs> not scale, and you're not going to use any fill. Mm -hmm. All right, so, but one thing you will be doing is you'll be changing the color of the stroke, the stroke of the outline. Because when the laser cutter cuts, it can differentiate different objects by their, their outline color. So like, for example, if you made a wheel, you have a big circle, which is the wheel, and a little circle, which is the, the hub, or the place where you're going to put the axle. Well, it may not necessarily be first obvious at first, but if you cut the big wheel out, <laughs> the part's going to drop down, and now when you cut the little hole, it's going to be a problem. So you have to have a sequence. Well, the way the laser cutter differentiates that, okay, is by the stroke color. So we would make the little one, the little, the hub circle red, and the outside black, and then tell the laser to cut the red line first, and then the black lines. Okay? So. This is the palette, so where you can change the colors. Now, in actuality, the ones you'll be normally using is the one that's right next to the no color, which is a big red X, which is a black, and these primary colors that you have here. All right, uh, these shadings typically you won't be using. Okay, uh, if you do something and it, nothing seems to happen, you know, otherwise I did a command and it, nothing happened. Well. There's two things you will you can do. The first thing you do is you're going to go up to uh, the edit undo button and find out if the thing really happened. Because if nothing happened, you won't show the new the last command. But the other thing you're going to do is go down here to the context context sensitive help, and it'll probably tell you what you did wrong. Like you didn't to pick two objects, or you picked three objects and you were only allowed to pick two objects or whatever. So this is very useful for when you find yourself in an issue. All right? Because we like to know where we are and whatnot, the coordinates and the zoom are over here in this corner, down here in the bottom. If you're doing this right, you won't worry about the coordinates, and you won't worry about the zoom, because that's, you just don't have to do that. All right? You're, you're making it too complicated. Okay. Now, on this side, you have another tool toolbox, and this one has to do with setting with with snapping, basically. And snapping is when you take some point or set of points. It can be an object, it can be a grid, it can be a guide. Now we'll talk about what they are, and you can bring your object, and when you get close enough, it'll actually snap to your other object, your other your guide, whatever it is. And these tools right here are how you define what's going to what's going to uh, snap to what, okay? Uh, then something that's uh, relatively new in Inkscape, I think they were following Adobe, 
they have what they call dot, <coughs> dot uh, dialog boxes. And the problem you run into is if you start bringing in a lot of the dialog boxes for various tools, they get, you know, you can't see what you're doing. So you can dock them over here, and then if you click on them, they'll pop back out. So that way you can kind of keep your workspace clean. All right? Then finally, you have your rulers up here on the top and on the Y ruler on the other side. Here's an example of a couple of objects. So what's that blue? Bill. That's on it. Okay, good. All right, just want to make sure. All right, so, um, okay, so like if you want to set a stroke or a fill to no color, that little red X in the corner is what does that, okay? All right, does everybody feel a little comfortable now with the interface? Okay, now these kind of are like the important shortcuts. Actually, in Inkscape, I find that I don't, the only real shortcut keys that I tend to use are the copy and paste. All right? That's because I'm, I'm doing so much with my mouse anyway, it's just easier to go to the, the right menu thing and click on it. But if you are a shortcut person, I would say these were, would be, these are the things you tend to do the most. You select them all, or you copy, you paste, you duplicate, which is different from a paste, than a copy-paste, and we'll talk about that. Uh, you group things. If you've worked with PowerPoint, you know what grouping is. Uh, you ungroup things, uh, and you raise things to the top or the bottom of the stack order. You can actually raise them one, one layer or down one layer, and we'll talk about what the stack order is. Uh, but in actuality, you're always saying, ah, I don't know where they are. Put this one on the top or this one on the bottom. Now, you don't usually worry too much because you're usually only worrying about a few objects. Now, the mouse keys. <coughs> Uh, the center mouse is very important, just like it is in KiCad, and just because life is difficult. They are different. They're not the same as KiCad. So if you use, if you scroll the center mouse button, the, the image will move vertically. If you push shift while you're scrolling the middle button, it'll move horizontally. If you use control, it'll zoom in and out. So with these three, you can control where everything, anything is on the screen. And you will be using them a lot. Okay, now the other thing that, that a lot of people don't realize and don't cover is that if you double click on a guide, and we'll show what a guide is in a minute, uh, it opens a precise positioning box. And one of the things that you always want to do is not try to place an object, not try to place a guide. Always use the text boxes that are either on uh, by double clicking in the case of a guide or in using in the tool control bar if, if you're selecting an object. Okay? All right, so let's, let's talk about just some definitions here and get things going. So, an object, a shape or a path. Okay, stack order. All right. Uh, Inkscape has layers, like a lot of other vector drawing programs and like things like Photoshop. But inside of a given layer, and we typically only use one layer for designing robot parts, uh, though not necessarily, but typically, uh, when you put two objects, the new object is always higher on the stack. So you keep stacking stuff. So if I put a square, and then I put another square, the second, and I cover up part of the first square, I'm going to see the full second square and part of the first square. All right? Now, there are tools, the ones, if you remember, the home and end short keys, that I can actually put this guy on top, or I can take this guy and put him on the bottom. All right? So you can change the stack around. But in a layer, there's the stack order. And that's very important because a lot of the tools take the top, object and apply it to the one that's lower in the stack. All right. We talked about fill and stroke. Okay, a layer is like a, a sheet of tracing paper. You just put it on top of it. So just like if you would, so if you were looking at a piece of art and looking through a bunch of layers, what you would see would be the composite of all the layers that you were looking through. 
typically, though, objects on a given layer are isolated from objects on another layer. Now, you can, in Inkscape, you can change that behavior, but typically that's the way it is. So we uh, probably won't use as layers as much as somebody who was creating a piece of art. Okay? They would use layers out from the wazoo. The, the, the value of a layer is that you never commit to an idea very far. Otherwise, like if you're making a, a face, well, you put the head shape on one layer and the eyes on another layer. So now if you want to go back and just change the eyes, you just go to the eye layer and change it. All right? Uh, okay. Okay, a guide. A guide is simply a line that you draw across your screen, which allows you to line things up to it. We can have vertical, vertical guides, we can have horizontal guides, and we can have diagonal guides. Okay? And in actuality, you can have any angle guide you want. So if you want a 33.4 guide, you can have it. Okay? But we'll but typically you use horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Alright? Uh, I was going to show a little a little thing here. We're going to try it. If it doesn't work well, then I'll go through I'll go through and do it on the screen. So let's see if this will work. If I, I tried it at home and it was a little glitchy. 